Hey everyone, Two Angry Frogs here with AtQ, and today we're going to cover how to sim your character. Simming your character is a great way to gain insights in how to maximize your DPS output. Should I swap out this piece of gear for that one? What stat percentages should I have? What piece of gear should I select from the Great Vault? In this video, we will show how simming your character answers these questions and many more. But before we begin, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you always know what we're up to next. And thank you to everyone for your support. Now, let's get into it. So what do we need to sim our characters? One add-on and one website, and that's it. We'll show you how to install Simulation Craft using Curse Forge, as that is one of the most common ways to manage add-ons for World of Warcraft. If you do not have Curse Forge, you can get the download at the link below. I highly recommend selecting the download standalone option and not installing Overwolf, which is not really needed by most WoW players. To run the sims for our characters, we will use raid bots. You can get to raid bots at the following address. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using the top gear function. When you select top gear, you'll be presented with what at first appears to be an unmanageable number of variables that need to be set up. So let's break this down so it's straightforward and easy to understand. To get started, you'll need to go into WoW and click the SimC button attached to your minimap, or type SimC in the chat window. You can toggle the minimap button by typing SimC minimap in the chat window. This will open a window that contains a simulation string providing all the information that Raybots needs to properly sim your character. Simply copy the string in the SimC window, and then in Raybots, paste the string in the Load from SimC add-on text box. When pasted in the text box, you'll see a graphical display of the SimC text string for your character, including your currently selected talents. So let's start with the gear section of Top Gear. Under item sets, you will see what tier set items you currently have equipped, and it will give you the option of specifying the minimum number the simulation must keep. So for example, we see that Atku Lock has all five pieces for the Season 3 tier set. To get the bonus, only four of the five are needed. So I could select four and allow the sim to replace one of the pieces, if there is a better gearing option. Next, item upgrade currency shows the currency used for upgrading gear in Season 3 and how many you currently have for this character. You can select the Show All checkbox to see all currencies used for Season 3, even if you have none of that currency. Next to the number you currently have, you'll see various ways to increase the currency to enable simulation of higher level items. Finally, you can specify the number of catalyst charges you currently have to ensure the simulation does not include converting more items to tier set gear than catalyst charges you actually have. So how do we know what gear is best and what to select out of all those Great Vault options? We'll get to the Great Vault question, but first let's look at comparing gear we have in our inventory. The gear selection area will show what gear you currently have equipped and what gear is available in your inventory. When you first paste in the SimC string, items you have equipped will be highlighted in this section. To compare gear, simply select the gear you want included in the simulation by clicking on the unhighlighted gear. You can also remove gear from the simulation by unselecting it in the same way. For each piece of gear that can be upgraded to a higher item level, have sockets added, or can be converted to tier set, and so on, you'll see a plus sign in the bottom left corner of the item. Note that you can only sim upgrades based on available currency. So for example, if Akulok has limited worm streaming crests, this will impact what upgrades I can select. Upgrades that you do not have enough currency for will be grayed out and not selectable. So how do we use this to answer the questions we have about our character gear? Let's walk through some scenarios. First, let's say you want to determine how to best spend your available currency. For example, I can choose to either upgrade Akulok's Helm or Chest to item level 476. In the upper right corner, you'll see the UPG to indicate that these items are being simulated as upgrades. When I select Find Top Gear, the simulation will show the DPS difference with the upgraded items. And as we see from the results, upgrading the Helm is almost a 700 DPS increase as compared to upgrading the Chest. Second, let's say you have a piece of gear equipped and a piece of gear in your inventory and both can be upgraded and you want to see how they compare at the same item level. For example, if I were to compare the gear items for Akulok's feet, I would expect that the Life Woven Slippers would sim higher since they're 13 item levels higher than the Restful Dozer shoes. So to really compare them equally, I would want to see both at the same or very similar item level. 
So we see without any upgrades, the restful feet are about 240 DPS higher. But what if we had the Aspects Dreaming Crest to update the slippers? Now we see that the slippers are over an 1100 DPS increase. So if we know we can get the 60 Aspect Crest, it's better to go with the slippers. Third, you can check to see if it's worth trying to farm a specific piece of gear. So for example, Pip's Emerald Friendship Badge is one of the top trinkets for multiple specs this season. Should I try and run, let's say LFR, Normal, Heroic, etc. every week to try and get this trinket? To see this, you can add any piece of gear to be included in the simulation by searching for it in the item search. The item is added to the selected gear for that gear slot. You can also specify what item level so you can distinguish between different levels of content. So if we send pips at item level 441, we see that at 441, it's only 164 DPS increase. So we would definitely need to upgrade it to a higher item level than our current gear for it to make a significant difference. Finally, you can use this to determine how much DPS a particular enchant is providing and how would it compare if you added sockets to particular pieces of equipment by selecting those various options. For these items, you'll see an MOD in the top right corner to indicate the gear has been modified. I can't count the number of times I've seen the question of what should I pick in my great vault? Well, here's how to answer that question. To get to this answer, you simply open your great vault in game, but do not select anything. Close the great vault and then open SimC in game to get the SimC string, which will include great vault items. Pasting the SimC string into Raybots will include all items that are currently available in your Great Vault, and you'll see these marked with a GV in the top right corner of the item. You can now compare your Great Vault items just as you would any other piece of gear. The next area, Enhancements, enables simming different enchant and gem combinations. You'll see enchants listed first. You can check Show All Enhancements to see every enchant available depending on what you want to sim. Let's say I want to check to see what the best enchantments for my character are to increase DPS. So with Aku Druid, let's check the leg, ring, and chest enchants. As we see from the results, waking stats for chest, lambent armor kit for legs, and mastery enchants for both rings produce the highest DPS. Note that we not only know what enchants are recommended, but the sim has also taken care of what the best stat percentages are so we know beyond just rough guidelines. Similar to enchants, you can also determine the best gems to use to maximize your DPS. So for example, if I add a socket to a piece of gear, what would be the best gem to use based on the stats of my current gear? Since this is not a prismatic socket, I'll choose 12 possible combinations to see which is the optimal. From the simulation, we can see that it recommends a Crafty East Emerald, which is a 545 DPS increase. In the next section of Top Gear, we see that we can also test different talent builds. So let's assume for Aku Druid, I don't really like the rotation with New Moon and want to see if there is an alternate rotation without that spell. How would it affect my DPS if, for example, I chose to select Nature's Grace and Elune's Guidance for single target raid boss encounters instead? After creating a new talent build, I copy this MC string and paste it into raid bots. In the talent section, no new moon build is what we currently have equipped, so we will select default mythic plus for the comparison. As we see, it is about a 2.8% DPS difference. This provides a way to experiment with different talent builds, to find one that maximizes your DPS, or is most comfortable without losing a significant amount of DPS. The final part of setting up a sim is selecting variables in the simulation options to indicate what type of encounter is being sim. There are multiple options for this, as you can see in the fight style dropdown. Patchwork is the default DPS check type of encounter. You can also set the number of bosses. So for example, if you want to sim against a council raid boss fight, such as the Council of Dreams, you could select three bosses. You can also specify the fight length. If you have trinkets or embellishments supported by the sim, you can specify uptime and their attributes associated with those items. If you do not have a specific item equipped, this input is simply ignored and not included in the sim. Finally, you can specify which buffs you expect to have for the fight. To get a baseline DPS comparison, you can simply specify no buffs. For more precise simulations, each of these can be specified in detail, 
or you can select optimal raid buffs to have Top Gear automatically select the best buffs based on your character. For a single target boss fight, such as a raid boss, you can get good results by selecting patchwork, one boss, and six minutes, and then select the buffs that are closest to what you will be using for that fight. For dungeons, you can select Dungeon Slice as the easiest way to send the content. However, note that Dungeon Slice can have a large margin of error in the results, depending on many different factors, including each dungeon being very different as far as routes and how many mobs are pulled at a given time. For much more precise Mythic Plus results, it's best to use a route exported to SimC for Mythic Dungeon tools. Using SimC and Raybots, you can sim gear very quickly and easily. It has a lot of options that can generate very powerful simulations, but you can also use it to simply determine what you should select from the Great Vault, if one enchant is better than another, and so on. It can be as simple or as complicated as you want the simulation to be. Let us know what you think down below in the comments, and if there's anything you would like to see in future videos. And to everyone, have a great day.